The myth that Soviet propaganda invented the non-existent duo yegorov kantaria has long since been debunked. Russia remembers its heroes, who were the first to hoist the flag on the Reichstag. Melitin Kantaria was only 25 years old at the time. Having gone all the way from the first days of the war to Berlin, having experienced the death of his comrades and several wounds, Melitin Varlamovich survived. And he was unable to understand and accept the collapse of the Soviet Union. The Germans could not destroy our country. And we allowed ourselves to do it. I envy Mishka Yegorov that he did not live to see these terrible days, the old soldier lamented. He was silent, wiped away his tears, and quietly asked, where do we get the banner now? Where to plant it? Biography in 11 minutes. Melitin Varlamovich did not like to talk about himself. Even his children and grandchildren know about his childhood and fate mostly from documents. Once he gave an interview to a TV correspondent, the whole story lasted only 11 minutes. Melitin Kantaria was born in Georgia. After finishing the fourth class he started to work in a collective farm. In 1940 he was drafted into the army. The recruit was ready to fight the Finns, but that war he did not make it. At the age of 20, I knew absolutely no Russian. I could neither read nor write. It was hard, especially in the first year of the war. We were leaving our cities. And from 1943 we were chasing the fascists off the Russian land. Then there was Latvia, Lithuania, Berlin, recalled Melitin Varlamovich. A feat questioned. At the end of the 80s the feat of Yegorov and Kantaria was called a myth. Allegedly they picked an international duet of soldiers that did not even know each other. Kantaria was very offended to hear such nonsense. One day, tired of journalists' questions on the subject, the former spy said that he and Yegorov were indeed chosen for a pretty picture. They put him on an elevator and took him to the top of the Reichstag. Photographers were already waiting there. In fact the soldiers were friends and served together as scouts in the 150th Division. According to eyewitnesses and documents of those years, Kantaria and Yegorov fought their way up to the building, climbed the broken staircase to the roof, climbed the broken dome and with bloody hands planted the red flag. Risking their lives under continuous fascist fire, the soldiers carried out the regiment commander's order, burning Abkhazia. After the war, Melitin returned to Abkhazia. First he worked on a collective farm, then in a mine. In 1970, he became head of a butcher shop. His large family lived modestly but amicably. The collapse of the USSR undermined Melitin Varlamovich's health. He took the tragedy of a great country too close to his heart. And the Georgian Abkhaz conflict turned his life upside down. Fearing for his family, the hero of the Soviet Union had to go to Moscow. Leaving his native village, Kantaria said, In the war I fought not only for Georgia but for the whole huge country. None of this exists now. Many people think they will live better if they secede from the Soviet Union. That's not true, Kantaria never made it to Moscow. He died on a train. It was 1993. The 50th anniversary of the great victory was less than two years away.